you were good on the gas side. <laughs> I've been starting this car since 1994. Oh, I'm not going to change the technique what? today. You got to pump it 40 times, or this is not. This thing ain't going to pay attention. I always thought Camilla was Detroit's rock star. He's been on TV, magazines, feature length articles. This is a big, mean, dark, cold city. And Camilla's kind of this little burst of energy and burst of light down there. As all the designers showed up at 8 in the morning, Camilla would kind of walk in around 10. You know, Thursday afternoon, we all have to have you know several drawings up of something. He hasn't touched the thing. He stays up all night and does all these sketches, puts them on the wall, and they just absolutely blow away everybody. Camilla has earned the respect of everyone in the automotive industry with the, the car that he's developed. Update an icon, but preserve the essence of what makes it special in the first place. And that is the hardest vehicle to design. Just the fact that Camilla stays in the city is probably one of the greatest gifts that he can give to the city. It's a big deal that Camilla made the decision to invest and live and work and create in the city of Detroit. It's a big deal. Nobody would do what he did. The Bank of Boone, I remember lots of times walking in there and lots of times uh, I don't remember walking out. <laughs> it's always a good time down there. Always a fun. He had like the factory, the coolest artists, the coolest musicians. People, models, actors, I mean, they just hang out there and Camilla will be their pain. It's always, it's always part of there every weekend. There's always something exciting going on, photo shoots. You knew right away that he was special. Right at that moment, I was like, you are the luckiest man alive. Not just because you got a supercar, but you designed it, you paint it, you're, you're living it, man. Like, you are living the designer's dream. And I said that to him, dude. I was like, Camillo, you are the luckiest guy alive. Camilla, it's all yours. Please welcome Camilla Parra. Thanks, John. It's great to be here, an honor to be here um, with all this great technology and talented people. Um, I'm going to go through a video. Well, let me tell you real quick. Uh, I graduated from CCS. I worked at Ford for 24 years um, in production advance. Uh, I was the chief designer of SVT and chief designer of the Ford GT. Um, this first video that we're gonna show real quick, I'm gonna do a voiceover, uh, is a commission that I recently finished. It was uh, brought on by Novellus. Novellus um, provides the aluminum for the new Ford GT and aluminum for other vehicles as well. The, the sculpture that was commissioned was made out of blanks to Z28s, uh, the, the new Z28, and okay, I don't have to get close to mine. It was uh, fabricated in my buddy's shop in the Paquette plant where the old Model Ts were done. Uh, small models were made of these manta rays, that was the subject matter I wanted to go with, with the hood panels. Um, they were made out of, the models made out of foam and cardboard and then uh, once we decided that we had the shape right, then we cut them out of the aluminum sheets. That English wheel there, that is the way that fenders and hoods and all, all the car panels were made in the past in uh, carrocerias, like, uh, like in Italy and stuff, Ferraris and all that, uh, but American cars as well. So once you get the shape all, um, the way that you want it, um, you have to make these small jigs to put the personality and lines in it. That's a mock-up there because you don't want to mess up your final piece of metal. So you can see how we control the curves and how we can get um, the hem on particular areas of, uh, of the man ray. I had to come up with a, a different kind of front end for it, if you want to call it that. I, I did very much treat this like a, like an automotive um, process. This part right here, we're putting a crease across the Manta Ray like you would see in an old Camaro hood. Um, these items, these, these sculptures 
when finished, uh, were polished and detailed with graphics and accessories. The look of these sculptures uh, were going to be very mechanical at the same time that they're organic. Um, I, I took in a lot of details that you would find in uh, automotive uh, functional components and aircraft where they have to take in air um, and where they need to um, have you know there's like graphics functional graphics for example caution and um, uh, disclaimers and such and then all all three of these manta rays have tail numbers just like an airplane uh, it's a font that I designed along with the, with the, the call out manta um, I call these the MR 400 series uh, and there is 404, 403, and 407. And those are, the fours and the sevens are numbers of my font that I use quite a bit on my, uh, on my vehicles. So basically everything was applied to these sculptures in an automatic, automotive, uh, industrial design kind of uh, approach. They almost look like drones. Um, they're all different. Uh, the manta rays, one, one of them has the, the wings going up, the other one has the wings uh, on a downstroke, and then one has an OG, which is a negative and a positive. This is um, one of the sculptures that I, or one of the art pieces that I've just finished, and it is hanging in my gallery. If you guys are ever in Detroit, you can come visit Art and Development. Um, now I'm gonna go through this rather quickly. This is a uh, series of sketches and um, designs like you would see in automotive design. Um, these are very common. This is some of the uh, development of the Ford GT will be in here. That, that was a computer sketch. This is a clay model. The clay model uh, is done at its maximum uh, level of, this is what we call a glamour clay and this can be used for um, market research. These are early sketches, well, it's kind of close up, but this is a, a sketch done in 1999 of the Ford GT. Uh, some of the rear view development, uh, these sketches are done in Photoshop over a math model. So what you do is you, you create the math model that's going in the direction you want, but you don't have the rear end on it yet. Well, you might as well not build the whole rear end, commit to it. You can just take that rear end and just do several sketches on the back of it until you uh, decide that that is the one that you want. Um, a sketch board development, um, a design direction, kind of an icon car. Um, this car would be um, a hybrid and we wanted it to be very graphic. The cars that are very graphic that are um, icons um, are vehicles like the Volkswagen and the Mini. They're, they're, they're strong impact um, when you see them visually and you'll always remember them. So the characteristics of these were gonna be in, in that direction. This vehicle here was to celebrate the 32 Ford's 50th anniversary. We uh, were doing concept sketches of what we could do with a 32 and how it would look in the future. That's too close to tell you anything about it, but it's another uh, hybrid car. There you go. There's a, there's a better look at a hybrid vehicle with a very strong graphic where the um, door handle would be included into the DLO. DLO is a daylight opening um, for the, the side glass. This taxi here was done for the Detroit Auto Show and it was taking uh, the Transit Connect. It was a very successful popular car in, the, um, in, in, um, in Europe and then applying it to something like New York or Detroit. The inside of the vehicle uh, was detailed kind of like an aircraft. Uh, all integrated and light colored and with big plexi window uh, uh, integrated monitor that you could swipe your card and you know uh, get your fare and your tip. Also have navigation so you could tell where you were going and where you were coming from. AC and uh, the regular currency would go through that uh, little sphere that it called Sputnik. More sketches, this was a Thunderbird program. I was on the Thunderbird program, which was a lot of fun. It's one of the coolest things that I've done outside the Ford GT. 
This was a um, hydrogen car that uh, we took to Washington. Zero emissions, more shots of the taxi. Um, this is a close-up of the Thunderbird. <laughs> it has uh, had a very dynamic front end and the rear end as well, um, you know, with the classic afterburner kind of exhausts. And this was Ford GT number one, up in the test track in Romeo. That car was assembled and disassembled like three or four times, you know, trying to get everything to fit right. You know, as the parts came, the early parts out of the tools. Uh, the interior of the car, which also reflects a lot of the original Ford GT, but in a very contemporary way. Um, during, during my work at SVT, we worked on a lot of Cobras with Carol Shelby. This was another concept car for the Transit. The Transit, you can see it now everywhere. It's, uh, it's become quite successful. People understand how to use a very small, efficient package like that. Um, this was actually called the Pusher. Um, it was not a real Ford GT, it was a fiberglass car that later, uh, we used it to photograph and paint different colors. Here it is in red. Um, and that's the clay model of the Ford GT as we were working at uh, the surfaces during the development and engineering. At that point, we're going very close to the engineers um, because you can see that the cut lines for the headlamps and everything is completely developed. Earlier um, this year or late last year it was um, Motor Trend asked me to start sketching on what the next Ford GT would look like. And these were some of the sketches that I did for Motor Trend. And this is actually an early sketch of the original GT. Um, during the SVT programs, uh, we did this GTR, which was for the 40th anniversary of the Mustang. We showed it in New York City, where it originally showed. And Kid Rock drove out in it. And they didn't tell me that he was going to be around, and I know the guy, so it was a good surprise to see him. That's the um, hydrogen plug-in edge, and I had to design this little uh, fuel lid. It was really kind of cool, it had a, uh, like a spring action that you pushed in and pulled out. And we had that milled out of um, aluminum, so it needed two of them for some reason. I can't remember the details on it, but it was a fun uh, vehicle. Got some details on the taxi. This taxi was um, quite a hit in New York at the auto show. You can imagine everybody, people love taxis. They're actually, I don't know if they pe people there really like cars, you know, because <laughs> you, you don't want a car over there. It's hard to park and um, it's just mad, it's madness. So for these cars that you guys are talking about that are, what do they call them? They're self-driven. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, one of those. I like. I can't even say it. I gotta. I gotta drive the car. I want the steering wheel and I want the shifters. So, anyways, this is another um, another vehicle that would be a hybrid, and that's what they asked me at one time. What would it look like if we went racing? And now they're going racing. Uh, different sketches for the hybrid vehicle. Uh, again, strong personality and rare. Let's see if we can see some more. There we go. Now bringing in the graphics real tight uh, into the center. That kind of does not let the vehicle look wide. It pulls it in, but the fenders will bring out the graphics wide. The other one, like these, when you take the graphics way out to the side, that makes the vehicle look a lot wider. Well, this is a close-up <laughs> of, uh, of a Corvette that I did for Car and Driver. Car and Driver um, caught wind that uh, GM is gonna do a mid-engine Corvette, so they had three designers, Ken Okiyama that did the Enzo, a buddy of mine, and uh, Peter Stevens did, did the uh, McLaren, the first F1 McLaren for the road, and myself that was you know involved with Ford GT. We all sketched away, and uh, this was my idea of um, of a GM mid-engine Corvette. Uh, I I do a lot of fashion design. Fashion design involves graphics and surface and and panels. It's very much like a car. You know, if you could do a car out of one big sheet of aluminum, then it'd be, you know, a lot simpler. You just, but it, it has to be divided into different sections, just like panels do on, a, on an outfit or a shirt. These are silk screens. This is like my affordable line for girls that, you know, these, these dresses are easy to wear. They can wear them. They can dress them up. They can wear them over their swimsuit. They can wear them to bed. They can do anything with them. And they're, um, they're like, you know, like 80 bucks. This is 
for my buddy that runs the city airport, and uh, it's it, it, we. I did the graphics for DAC, uh, Detroit Aircraft Corporation, and these are for his flight attendants. Um, a very simple kind of Pan Am look, but contemporary. And I made a little roller bag. They have pill, pill type hats, you know, and the long white gloves. I, you know, feel strongly that they should bring this back into the aircraft. You know, <laughs> flying a lot more fun. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Um, I've done a lot of graphics on these uh, uh, kind of Steve McQueen Le Mans jackets. You know, uh, they come with a blank back, so that's uh, canvas for me. So I, uh, I paint these, they're one of the kinds, and we auction them off. Um, I do a lot of painting over vintage jackets. This is uh, my interpretation of Chanel Racing. So it's this championship team on it, just like it would be Marlboro. I don't know, maybe they should get Chanel to sponsor some F1s. Um, this is um, a space suit. I'm very much inspired by space and technology of that sort. And, you know, um, NASA, um, Blade Runner, and all that Hollywood stuff. But if it was up to me, this is how a space suit should fit. <laughs> A little bit of 2001. I made that helmet. That was a lot of work, but um, we got a lot of function out of it for photo shoots. This is again the silk screen outfits. Oh, one more shot of our flight attendant. Well, this was for a restaurant, and they wanted um, some graphics of you know, their clientele, and then we applied it. We we're applying it to aluminum. And this would be, you know, some of the interior of the restaurant, you know, and uh, that would be the exterior. This is in progress in, in um, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Here's a watch inspired by uh, Mustang gauges, a watch inspired by Mustang aircraft gauges. And then the, this the furniture again. I think, did we do a full lap now? Oh, no, signature series cars. I do a line of signature series for GTs for my uh, clients. You know, they'll bring us the car and then um, I'll redo the graphics on the vehicle with a different paint scheme and uh, the font that I designed. Sometimes there's a little bit of direction from the client, but most of the time they, um, they go ahead and tell me, you know, have at it and we do some interior work. Um, this is kind of the process, you know, that you have. It, it's very manual. I don't do the actual painting on the car. I tape it out. This guy uh, wanted something satin, so we did the satin car with the um, aluminum nose. And this one was a red nose stripe that uh, we redid with uh, Jason Hefner. And he, uh, he put a twin turbo uh, system on it. It brought the horsepower to about 1,100. This car here we did for a client in Santa Monica. He gave me a green light to do whatever I wanted. And I picked out this aluminum paint that we used in concept cars and I did the heritage stripe in aluminum. This is my recent um, graphic development. Um, we did a white one, a silver one. And this is the, the silver one. Uh, and this one's my personal, but it is for sale. And um, it is, that's at the Miller Motorsport Park. It was very exciting to go to the track and see that. This is me telling or explaining to Etzel Ford what I did to his car. <laughs> <laughs> we put it up vertical, but I did take time to mask off the windshield and the wheels and the headlamps. I poured paint all over it. Uh, Ford Racing was very excited about it. And then when you peel all that off and the stickers, it looks like a real graphics jab, job, but it was quite spontaneous. Uh, later, I convinced a buddy of mine to let me do it to his 917. And uh, I hung this thing vertical in my garage, and there's a big hole in the second floor where I could pour paint out of. And it poured paint all over his car. I did it while he wasn't there, and I didn't want to elaborate exactly what I was going to do to his car. But uh, he was happy at the end. Are we about done? Because this is, this is just going to be art now. Do you want me to? 
Okay, great. Thank you very much, you guys.